This tutorial will get you up to speed with creating code components in Framer Web. This opens the possibility of creating your own custom components to get more out of Framer and empower you to make feature rich prototypes. This tutorial series is best viewed in the context of Framer Web. If you're on YouTube, use the link in the description to follow along. This is Coding with Seth. Let's see what we'll be building. Throughout the series, we'll be building out some screens you might see in a mobile banking app. We'll start with a line item which will get you comfortable with styling components and will build the foundation for creating more reusable and flexible components. With your first component out of the way, I'll guide you through creating a bar chart. We'll see how powerful code can be by using props to change how the chart looks. Finally, we'll flex our new found code component prowess and create a data-driven transactions component. To achieve this, we're going to reuse our line item component to create a list of transactions with their own names, colors, and prices. Let's dive in and see how we can get set up for writing a code component. When creating a new project, you'll notice there is no mention of code anywhere. By default, Framer Web will only show code if we are already working with code components or overrides. Let's create our first component by going to the main menu, navigating down to code, and then we'll create our first code component. We'll call it line item. We'll explore code overrides later in the series. Click create and you'll be greeted with a code editor, showing the default template for our new component. You can get a good idea of how code components work by taking a look at this template. You'll notice a link to the Framer documentation. If you're ever unsure of how some of the default components work, then I suggest taking a look at this documentation. It's an invaluable resource for getting started with Framer. Framer makes use of React for code components, and we'll be writing these in TypeScript. Let's clear this out and start from scratch. First, we go into import React. Then, we'll create the function that will export the component itself. We can preview what this component looks like by clicking the preview at the top. Our preview shows an error. You'll see this if there is an error in the code, or if we haven't saved the file yet. The line item will have three main parts. I've chosen to pull out the style objects to make things a bit cleaner. You should find line item in the template. We have a simple structure in place, but let's make it easier to style by accepting some props. This allows us to feed data into our new component. The line item function here takes a single argument called props. To avoid having to write props.iconcolor, props.name, and props.price, we're using destructuring. This allows us to pull icon, name, color, and price directly out of props. We are using the spread operator here for icon style. We do this so we can change the background color dynamically given the prop that comes in. It spreads the properties of icon style into a new object, and then we set the background color to icon color. Default props are really useful when working with the preview. It allows us to have our props connected while still getting a feel for how the component looks. Now we know it's working. Let's work our way through styling our component. Our icon will be simple. We'll set the width and height to 48 pixels. We'll also give it some nice round corners. Notice our icon color is already set. That's default props already at work. Changing it to red, you'll see the icon update in the preview. Finally, let's align the name to the left with Flex1. We'll give it some padding and bump up the font size. This is looking good, but I'd like the price to emphasize the pound amount and show a small pound symbol too. The pound symbol is easy, but how can we emphasize part of the number? Let's do this by manipulating the price coming in. We'll split the price at the decimal point 
so we can render pounds in one span and pence in another. If we ever make a typo or get the syntax wrong, the preview shows an error and directs us to where the error has occurred. In this case, we haven't used toString as a function, so let's correct that now. Then we can style these as we see fit. We're going to adjust the font size so we can emphasize the pound amount and de-emphasize the pence amount. It's looking good with our test data, but there's a small tweak we can make. What if our value was just 8? We still see the decimal point, but no 0, 0. With this adjustment, our component is complete. Jumping back over to the canvas, we can create a new frame and use our new line item component. You'll see the color, name, and price are already set by default props. Let's make something a little more interesting. We'll make a bar chart where we can change the number of bars we want to display and how they look. Just like before, we'll create a new component and we'll get rid of the template. To create the bars, we'll create the container and a couple of divs to prototype out the look and feel. If you're following along with the template I've provided, you'll also find a bar chart to get you started. We can preview our component by going up to the right hand side and clicking preview. This works for code components and the normal design components on the canvas. To clean up the styling, we'll move style props out into container style. The preview doesn't show anything because the container has a width and height of zero. We'll change that by changing the width and height to 100%. Let's continue styling our component. We have two bars, but this isn't flexible at all. We want to be able to use the power of code to make this a component that will support multiple scenarios. And that starts with being able to specify how many bars in this series we want. We'll write two helper functions. Get bar height will return a random percentage between zero and 100%. This will drive the height of the bar. Get bars will take a single argument, the number of bars in our chart. It will use get bar height to return an array of random bar heights for our chart. Let's hook this up. To allow this to be changed later on, we'll pass a number of bars in as a prop. We're going to import get bars from our utils. If you're following along, you should have the get bars utility function in utils.ts. We'll then call our helper function to get the height of each bar. To render these, we'll map over a single bar and pass the bar height into the div. Thickness and color will give us more control over the aesthetic we're going for. We'll also round the top edge with border radius and use the thickness to derive the radius. We'll add the default props to see what the bar looks like so far. I'll set the number of bars to 10. We can tweak our component by updating the default props. This gives us the flexibility to see what our bar chart would look like with a different thickness, a different color, or a different number of bars. You can also drag out the preview window to see how it responds to resizing. Let's add the bar chart to the canvas. We've created these code components. To use them in your designs, jump over to layers and you'll see them listed in the components panel. You can now drag them onto the canvas like any other design component. Finally, we'll use what we've learned to create a transactions component, which uses our line item and is driven by data. We'll create a new component just as before. This time, we'll call it transactions. Along with our normal React import, we'll also import a component. Code components can be composed just like you would in React. We created a line item earlier, so let's use the same component to represent a series of transactions.
We'll also create an array of data which will be rendered. We can then map through the transactions and render a line item, making sure to pass the properties from each transaction into the props of the component. Name, price, and icon color are props we accept for the line item. That's it. We have some transactions that are entirely controlled by data. You can easily add or change transactions, and when you update a line item, the transactions will stay in sync. This concludes the first part of the introduction to code components in Framer Web. We've covered creating code components from scratch, simple layout and styling, using props to make your components more flexible, using default props to view how components will look, and finally, tying it all together by reusing code components to create a data driven transactions component. Thanks for watching. In the next video, Components for the Rest of Us with Property Controls, we'll see how we can create code components to use them outside of the code editor in Framer Web. Until next time, this has been Coding with Seth.